Hi everyone, David Aragona and Craig Mulkowski here taking a look at one of the graded stakes on Saturday at Aqueduct. Actually, the first graded stakes they're running that day. Race three, it is the grade three gazelle going the demanding distance of a mile and eighth for the three-year-old Phillies. This one serving as a Kentucky Oaks prep race and offering points into the Kentucky Oaks. So we're likely to see one or two starters from this gazelle proceed on to that first Friday in May. Let's throw up the field for this race, Craig, and there are six runners signed on, but it's a pretty contentious group for a six horse field. It is. That's we're going to see as we move forward. The speed figures are pretty close among most of the contenders. And it's a race where we don't get to see this in the Kentucky Derby, where they're actually going to run the same distance as the Yokes. We don't get that for any of the prep races. So maybe this one has a little more added significance. Yeah, it could be a real test of stamina for some of these fillies, and that might come into play for a few of the contenders that we're going to talk about. Before we get into the individual runners, though, let's take a look at some features in Timeform US. First up is the Timeform US pace projector for this gazelle. And Craig, I pretty much agree with this. It looks like the two horses on paper that want to be forwardly placed are the number one Capella and the number five Occult. And given the fact that Occult is drawn outside of Capella, you'd imagine they'd be content to let that one go to the front and stalk outside of her. I, I would think so. I think the pace is a little bit murky. I imagine they'll be the top two, but I think when you get a small field like this, it's more often not than not going to become a jockey's race and, and largely dependent on the break. That number two gambling girl does get the late pace flag in the pace projector that indicates she has the highest late pace rating in time form US of any runner in that this field. And she'll need every bit of that to pass the runners ahead of her, especially if the early pace of this race is moderate. Let's also check out the time form US finish projector for this race. This a new feature in time form US, the redesigned version of time form US that's just launched both on DRF mobile PPs and also now on DRF desktop on DRF.com, a, a tab out right next to formulator and classic pps and craig i think this is a great use of the finished projector because it being a visual representation of the time form us selections it sort of shows the level of confidence in the top pick, top pick and not that confident as we see two horses basically hitting the wire together here the number three frosty O'Toole, and the number one capella yeah, it should be noted, though, that top pick is the second to, to highest odds on your morning line at nine to two. Uh, she is picked on top because of that speed figure she ran last time in an allowance win. And she's an interesting horse in this field, to be sure. Definitely. We're going to get to her in just a little bit, but let's start by taking a look at some of these contenders with checking out the prep race run at Aqueduct most recently, that being the Busher Stakes back in early March. This one was contested over a muddy racetrack, and two runners coming out of this race are back in the Gazelle, including the winner, She Dabuti, who's on the outside. Uh, Capella is the one in the pink Judmont cap and silks down towards the rail. And Craig, She Dabuti, this Chad Brown runner, just out in the center of the racetrack, gobbling up the ground. She's going to keep her undefeated record intact here, winning her third start in a row. And just one of these horses that has kept improving in every start, but she's only gone the one turn so far. She'll be stretching out around two turns for the first time. And that could be a question for her more so than some others as a daughter of Practical Joke. I would agree with that. Her speed figures are progressing nicely. She's obviously passed every test as we look at her PPs. The one big concern is can she handle that two turns? And Practical Joke isn't a sire known for getting horses to go, you know, elongated distances. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely a question mark. Yeah, I can appreciate her upward trajectory, especially for a barn like Chad Brown, who uh, can take his time with these horses, maybe those that don't show so much uh, in the summer of their two-year-old seasons. But I am a little bit concerned about that added distance. And I also felt that that March 4th day at Aqueduct, being outside was probably a better place on the racetrack than being right on the rail. And that brings me to the other horse coming out of that race, the number one Capella, who was down on the rail for her trip in that busher. You saw her basically glued to the inside coming around the far turn and into the stretch. Craig, I didn't love the early part of her trip that day because she was drawn inside again that day, but going the one turn mile distance and uh, I thought Florent Giroux had an opportunity to go forward, kind of decided to rate in the pocket it didn't look like she was the most comfortable behind horses because she is a horse that had gone gate to wire in her two prior starts on the synthetic at turfway and i would imagine they're going to go back to those front running tactics here 
I would as well. She's a filly who obviously we can see, even though she was three lengths behind Cheetah Beauty, she was just uh, three points on the Timeform US speed figure scale. That has to do with pace adjustments. And I think that's in large part because she didn't get the, the as good a trip as what the winner did, particularly, as you mentioned, the inside may not have been the place to be. She does have the question mark as well of never having run on a fast dirt track. She's also trying um, two turns on dirt for the first time. She handled it just fine on since at Turfway, but it is an extra furlong over those efforts. Yeah, she is one that has to get faster from a speed figure standpoint, but I do like the added distance for her. She is the younger half-sister to Bonnie South, who certainly appreciated these longer distances on the dirt uh, for these same connections, and I'm hoping for a step forward from Capella in this gazelle. The other local prep for this race was the Busanda, which was run earlier in the year at Aqueduct. Let's take a look at the stretch drive of that race, where Occult, uh, who is a filly, even though her name is Occult, uh, was uh, the winner of this race over uh, Gambling Girl from the Todd Pletcher stable. And Occult is the other Chad Brown runner in this field, Greg. And I guess the feather on her cap is that she's already handled the mile and an eighth distance, which she did right here. And I thought she finished up this race pretty strongly. Uh, got a good trip in doing so, but at least she's already answered that question. She has answered the distance question. Uh, you could look at her performance one of two ways, in my opinion. First, uh, the one way to look at it is it came over a very slow aqueduct surface back in January, one that I think is much different than what we're currently seeing. It's more like the springtime track. It's a more demanding track in January. So in addition to handling the mile and an eight, she did it over a deep, tiring track. So that's a, a positive. The negative for me is the speed figure wasn't that good. It was a fast pace that day, uh, which should have set up a better time for her. So I'm not as high on her, particularly as the morning line favorite, as I am some others in here. Yeah, I think that she's a horse that ran pretty well last time. I, I'm not blown away by the effort. Uh, considering the fast pace, I thought that she stayed on reasonably well at the end. But that 97 time form US speed figure doesn't make her a whole lot faster than some others in here. I think she's got a good trip coming to her. And I'm kind of preferring some horses that can be forwardly placed in this race. But I agree. I'm not sure the two to one is necessarily great value on her. The other horse coming out of the Busanda is the number two gambling girl. And she actually has run back since then, going over to Oaklawn Park to finish behind, I guess, the current Oaks favorite, Wet Paint, who swept that entire series at Oaklawn Park. Gambling Girl was fourth in that race. And Craig, I guess the one thing you can say about Gambling Girl is if some others are struggling with the distance towards the end, at least you know that she'll be finishing well. Yeah, that's the positive with her. She is getting better every time as we look at her speech figure. She's improved three times in a row. The concern for me is a, it's a smallish field. There's not a ton of pace. She doesn't seem to have a whole lot of early speed, and she's going to take a, need to take another step forward. If she was maybe a 10-to-1 shot or something in here, maybe she'd get some interest from me, but I don't think that's we, – we'd be lucky to get half of that, so I'm probably going to look elsewhere. The other Todd Pletcher trainee in this field is the number three, Frosty O'Toole. Let's take a look at her race last time when she was the winner of an optional claiming event at Tampa Bay Downs. And, you know, Craig, I guess there's a little bit of question about what she's beating this day. Uh, certainly not as tough a field as what she's going to be facing here. But I have to say, I like what I saw. She's a pretty robust filly. She's got some size to her, a nice long stride that suggests that added distance is going to be just fine. And she pulls away from her rivals pretty impressive. I liked what I saw that day and the 103 speed figure kind of stands out because we see horses coming out of winning efforts and stakes that haven't been as fast. Obviously, the competition was a little bit lower. We can see that 95 time form U.S. race rating. She did look a little bit green in the stretch to me, but I think the talent is there. Yeah, I pegged her at nine to two on the morning line. She's the kind of the tough call for me. I wasn't really sure how she's going to get bet moving into this Todd Pletcher stable. And obviously you're right about that last speed figure being pretty favorable compared to the rest of this field. She certainly bred to get the distance. She's a half sister to a horse named Sister O'Toole, who I think we've talked about on these stakes previews before, mostly in marathon turf races. Uh, so plenty of stamina there for Frosty O'Toole. I did find a stat for trainer Todd Pletcher looking up some statistics in DRF 
formulator uh, that turned me off of her a little bit. Uh, first off, a trainer switch on dirt in stakes races over the past five years. Kind of surprisingly poor stats for Todd Pletcher. Doesn't often win with these types in stakes events and some short prices in this sample. Uh, so something I was a little uh, concerned about, Craig, but if Frosty O'Toole is around that nine to two, I wouldn't talk anybody off her at that price. Yeah, I was looking for similar stats. I pulled up uh, one just for three-year-olds with the barn change, and it was just too small of a sample size. He was 0 for 5, which doesn't sound good. But when I looked a little closer at the horses, one of them was Miracle for this year, who ran a good uh, second at Fairgrounds. Uh, Life is Good was in there when he ran second. The Jackie's Warrior also ran very well, obviously, that day. So I wasn't as turned off by the numbers once I dug a little deeper into some of the performances. And finally, we should at least mention the long shot in this race, the number four, Promise Her America. Let's take a look at her maiden victory last time out at Aqueduct. This was going the one mile distance and she wins this race pretty easily. I don't think she was beating the strongest field here and she's going to have to get faster. But the one thing you can say about her, Craig, is that she has taken a step forward with added distance in every start so far. So maybe the mile and an eighth will work for her. I think that is the upside. She's getting better every time. She's stretching out another furlong, something she's done every single start. She's gotten better. She's bred the length of distance. So she obviously needs to improve those speed figures uh, more than a few lengths to compete with the better horses in here. But it's not out of the question. Yeah, I think she deserves to be a big price in this race, just given the accomplishments of some others. But as you said, she's certainly not impossible in here, just given that upward trajectory. Well, let's throw up our picks for this gazelle and Craig landing in somewhat different places here. Um, I put the number one Capella on top. I just want the horses that are going to be forwardly placed in this small field. And I wasn't thrilled with the trip that she got last time in the busher. I'm hoping that she's able to lead this field from gate to wire. And for me, I went with Frosty O'Toole, despite that formulator stat. I liked what I saw in the last race. And it's just the case of she has the best speed figure and she's going to offer some value. The number one, Capella for me. And the number three, Frosty O'Toole for Craig in the Grade 3 Gazelle on Saturday at Aqueduct. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.